I believe that human beings and our cognitive capacities have become obsolete in the world in which we live. So if you think about the evolution of humans, it, we, we grew up in relatively simple circumstances. We were in small groups, living in home ranges that weren't all that extensive. We lived and died within a few dozens of kilometers of each other. So there was no real, um, I suppose, pressures on the human mind to think beyond simple uh, cause-effect relationships. Bottom line is this, that the human brain, our cognitive capacities tend to be limited in most people to rather simplistic reductionist perspectives on reality. Okay, And if you think about that, climate change is a perfect illustration because there are hundreds of things happening but we fixate on climate change. The focus gets shifted a little bit when something like a pandemic comes along, but then it's all about the pandemic. We forget about climate change. Then there's the war in the Ukraine, and we talk about that for a while, and now we're back to climate change. And nobody bothers to connect all of those dots because human beings are not inherently, intrinsically capable of thinking systemically. When's the last time you had a dinner conversation about lags and thresholds and chaotic behavior and, and collapse syndrome, which is called catastrophe and systems theory and so on? It just doesn't happen. Okay, so climate change is our fixation because there are obvious symptoms that many people can relate to. But it's only one of we could spend the whole day talking about bio, plunging biodiversity, ocean acidification, soil and land erosion, on and on and on. Every single so-called environmental problem is a symptom of the same issue, which is overshoot. Overshoot is the fundamental issue. And the fundamental issue is the cause of all of these other problems. So overshoot means that human beings are using even renewable resources the products of ecosystems much faster than they can regenerate. And we're dumping wastes far in excess of the natural assimilative capacity of ecosystems, of, of, of the ecosphere. So on the one hand, we're drawing down all of our natural capital. Fish stocks are collapsing. Soils are eroding at 10 to 40 times the rate of restoration. Um, we're polluting far beyond the capacity of the systems to assimilate. Climate change is a pollution problem because carbon dioxide is the single largest waste product by weight of industrial economies. So the anthropogenic uh, component of climate, the, the carbon emissions, is a waste product, it's a waste management issue. The system, the Earth system, cannot cope in a timely manner, it will over time, but not in time with, with the quantity of carbon dioxide that we're putting out there. Wait a minute, so, by, by weight, CO2 is yeah. the, the largest waste product? I never thought yeah. about it that way. I mean, because yeah. it's like an invisible gas, but if you add it up, it, it actually Absolutely. has a weight in well, tons. we're putting out 36 billion tons a year of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere, of which a, a significant proportion is it's the carbon. And by the way, you know, it's what goes in as fuel. The coal, oil, natural gas is all carbon-based. And of course, it has to go through the system and is emitted as waste. But as you say, because it's an invisible gas, no one tends to think of it as waste. By the way, you get the counter argument from people who don't look systematically at this. Well, carbon dioxide is essential for life on Earth. Green plants need it for photosynthesis. So it's a good thing that this carbon is in the atmosphere and so on and so forth. But again, you have to put this in total context. So overshoot is the problem. Human beings are destroying the biophysical basis of their own existence. We are literally consuming that which we need to maintain the system uh, even at a reasonable size, and it's not at a reasonable size any longer. How, how do you define overshoot, and how does that relate to carrying capacity? Well, overshoot means you've exceeded your carrying capacity. So that if, if you think, uh, any farmer who has a bunch of cattle knows that if you put too many cows out in the pasture, they'll eat the grass until there's nothing but mud, and then they die. Now, if you import a lot of grass from some other farmer, you can keep your cattle going. So that's what humans have been doing. I mean, we talk about our urban ecology. That's nonsense. The city is not a complete ecosystem. The city, as we currently think of it, is the human equivalent of a livestock feedlot. 
because you have all of these consumer organisms jammed in this one area. And, you know, geologists, or not geologists, geographers and urban economists often say, well, cities are no problem. They're only 2 or 3% of the surface area of the earth. But that's from their narrow keyhole a reductionist, simplistic perspective. If we look at human beings and from an ecological point of view, then each city occupies on earth an area anywhere between a hundred and a thousand times more land than is within the political or, or built up area of the city. So the human urban ecosystem now is larger than the entire planet because cities have become parasitic on their environments because of globalization. I did a, an early study of Tokyo. Tokyo has 38 million people, the whole population of Canada. Okay, But Tokyo, and people used to say to me, well, how can you explain Tokyo? I said, explain it this way. Tokyo uses more biocapacity than the entire nation of Japan, about well, twice as much as a matter of fact. So the ecological footprint of Tokyo is larger than the entire country of Japan, and it's only something like a quarter or a third of the Japanese population. So Japan has exceeded its carrying capacity because of globalization. The capacity to bring in the resources needed to sustain its overpopulation. And because we can do that, we become blinded to the reality of our overshoot. As long as you can import from elsewhere, you are blind to the fact that you've exceeded your local carrying capacity. But what you're doing in the meantime is drawing down the available productive capacity in other places. And every country in Europe is in that circumstance. Japan is in that circumstance where they are living on imported carrying capacity or the assimilative capacity of the rest of the planet to absorb their carbon and other waste. We